What's up everyone? Justin here back with a predictions for WWE Extreme Rules 2022 from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The former home where ECW is born. In my opinion, Philadelphia ECW Arena, some of the greatest passionate hardcore wrestling fans followed ECW. I was one of them. I drank the Kool-Aid. I was an ECW fucking mark. I started following it full time in uh, 99. 1999. Anyways, I loved ECW. I wish they were still around. If they were, I could definitely see guys like Samoa Joe being there. CM Punk. Um, my God, others, just a lot of the great talent that's part of WWE or AEW, a lot of them would probably be in ECW. But sadly, Paul Heyman was not a businessman, was not good with running the company money-wise as a businessman. He was a great booker. My God, Paul Heyman, one of the best... One of the best uh, creative minds of all time and one of the best bookers. So, uh, yeah, Extreme Rules comes from Philly. All my Philly friends in Philly, I'm sure you're happy to be uh, living in Philly or Pennsylvania because the Eagles are 4-0. and So, again, I love DCW. I miss it a lot. It was one of my favorite wrestling companies and uh, promotions of all time. Not my favorite. My favorite, to be honest, is WWF, WWE. Because that's what I started watching when I got into wrestling. But ECW would be my number two favorite company ever. So here we go. Here is my Extreme Rules predictions. This match I did not hear about. Last uh, Friday on SmackDown, I heard about it tonight on NXT. It's a six-man tag. Six-man tag, good old-fashioned Donnie Brook match. Basically, what does that mean? No rules. Anything goes. Hopefully, they go in the crowd. Maybe they'll go take it to the streets of Philly. That'd be cool. If they went outside and had a camera follow them. The Brawling Brutes. Seamus, Ridge Holland, Butch, a.k.a. Pete Dunn, taking on Imperium, Gunther, Luke Vig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci, Imperium, Brawling Brutes, round two. Maybe this is round three. I don't know, but I could watch these two guys, I could watch these two teams and all these guys, I could watch beat the fucking hell out of each other forever. It will never get old. It will never get tiring or boring. Seriously, Brawling Brutes, Imperium, awesome feud. I will never get sick of it. And I could watch it forever and let them fight forever. Anyways, my prediction, this Friday actually, I th believe it's uh, this Friday. I don't know if SmackDown's alive. I have no clue if it's live before Extreme Rules the night before. Extreme Rules Eve is uh, Gunther Sheamus round two for the IC title on SmackDown. They're calling it the season premiere. So I don't really see Sheamus winning the IC title yet. I don't know. Maybe next year he could get it. I'm not sure. But I see Gunther holding it for a while. Past. Maybe losing at WrestleMania. I don't know. But if they keep the IC title on Gunther. They could build him up. Just as a unbeatable force. And champion to challenge Roman. Or face Roman. Maybe Roman won't be champ after WrestleMania. I don't know. 
but anyways, you still could have Roman and Gunther one on one on a pay per view for not even a title. It would still be great. My prediction I'm going to go with I'm going to say Gunther wins on Friday to retain the IC title. Then I'm going to say Saturday, um, the Brawling Brutes win. Up next, and I hope these two teams. I don't know, but I doubt they'll be added to war games, but they should be. I want to see the bloodline. Like, uh, three, I don't know, three members of the bloodline take on the Brawling Brutes and Imperium and, uh, I don't know who else, Kevin Owens and Drew McIntyre and one other guy. In a four teams war games at Survivor Series. Will they do that? I doubt it. It'll probably just be two teams of five on five. But Brawling Brutes, great faction. Imperium, great faction. They deserve to be in war games. Again, the Brawling Brutes will win the six man tag at Extreme Rules. Up next, I quit. I quit match. First time ever, one-on-one, -on -one, Edge, Finn Ballard should be fucking great. It really should be good. My prediction, uh, Finn is going to have the Judgment Day out there. Damien, uh, Dominic, Rhea. Edge might have Rey Mysterio in his corner and maybe AJ Styles. Shows up to interfere. Because AJ was beat the fuck down. On Raw by the Judgment Day. So Edge might have Ray and AJ is back up. Who knows. But I'm going to say Edge is not going to say I quit. I don't see Edge quitting. Would it put over Finn big time? Yes. Would it? Be good for his career, yes, but I would put over Edge. So my prediction is Edge wins, I quit. Up next, let's go with the Raw Women's Championship. By the way, on this uh, pay-per-view, again, we got no Charlotte Flair. And uh, who, no Roman. No Usos in the tag titles. So that's basically all that's uh, missing. There's no Roman, no Usos, and no Bloodline, and no Charlotte. And no Becky, of course. She's uh, injured. Hopefully Becky can come back in the beginning of November and be a part of uh, War Games for the women. I hope. I really hope Becky can be a part of the women's War Games. She deserves it. Because, sadly, she missed Clash at the Castle. So, uh, yeah, Raw Women's Title Ladder Match. Bianca Belair defends. She'll be with Alexa Bliss and Asuka in her corner, I guess. It says, I don't know why it says with, but it does. Uh, with Alexa and Asuka. I wanted something different and a change for Asuka, one of my favorites. Oh, God damn it. I'm trying to grab this Asuka shirt. Nice other clothes falling off the shelf. I'll put that up later. Anyways, I want to change for my favorite Asuka. Um, I think her gimmick. Not her gimmick. I think she needs a heel turn. She's been a face, like, ever since she came to the main roster. That was 26, I don't know, late. I think it was late 2017. She debuted on the main roster at, I believe, TLC against Emma. I know she won the first ever Women's Rumble. That was 2018. But I want a character gimmick, not a gimmick change, but... Character change. I want Asuka to be a heel. Or just 
quit being put in teams. I know Bianca is the main focus. She's a star. There's no doubt about that. She is a top star. And she's a focus of the Raw Women's Division along with Damage Control. But I just want more for Asuka. If she's not turned heel, that's uh, disappointing. I'm not saying she's not going to turn heel at Extreme Rules. I doubt it. But I want her to be a heel. Or just to turn into Kana. Bring back all the face paint. And just mist every woman that gets in her way. Mist them. And just beat the fuck out of them. Or mist Bianca out of nowhere. And then she could get on the mic and say, Bianca, I'm tired of uh, tagging behind you. I want your title. And pick up the Raw Women's title. That's what I would do. I would turn Asuka into Kana. As a heel. But they don't really need a heel, more heels, because they got damage control. But me personally, I want to change for Asuka so she can be put back up in the main event of the women's division. Not just put in tag matches all the time. And a part of a three-woman team. So uh, Bianca defends against Bailey. Damage control will be in Bailey's corner. My prediction: it, it could be Bailey. There's a small chance. I would say 50-50 chance Bailey could win with help from damage control, but I don't see it happening. Bianca Belair wins and retains. I don't see Bianca losing the title till WrestleMania. I don't see anybody taking it from her except for Rhea Ripley or Charlotte. And that's it. I would love for Asuka to take it from her as Kana, but I doubt they do that. But that's what I would do. I would have Asuka take it off Bianca and hold it for like, I don't know, two or three months. And then she could drop it to Bianca again. But anyways, uh, Bianca Belair wins and retains. I believe that will happen. Up next, strap match. By the way, every match is a gimmick like Extreme Rules hardcore type match. And it should be because it's called Extreme Rules. Drew McIntyre carrying cross in a strap match. I got Drew McIntyre winning. Will he? This is uh, Cross's first ever pay-per-view on the main roster singles match. So I don't see Cross losing, but he could. But, I mean, come on. Drew, Drew lost at Clash of the Castle. He shouldn't have, but he did. So Drew lost at the last pay-per-view. I don't like him losing twice. On two, two straight pay-per-views, Drew McIntyre losing. He's a top guy. He should be booked as a top guy. Instead of Logan Paul getting a title shot, it should be Drew, in my opinion. But uh, anyways, Saudi Arabia wants, I'm sure they wanted uh, Logan Paul to get a title shot. I don't know why, but I guess Logan Paul is really popular in Saudi Arabia. I don't know why, but he is, I think. Uh, the crown prince, by the way, of Saudi Arabia is a moron to want to see Logan Paul roaming. Maybe he, maybe he booked that because he's a fucker paying for the show. The show's just for him, basically. Or one match is for him. Watch they bring back Goldberg or Brock. At our crown jewel. And that match will be for the prince. Anyways. Drew McIntyre wins. I'm going to say. Up next. Fight pit matchup. Fight pit. It's going to be great. First ever fight pit on a WWE pay per view. I don't think we would have ever saw a fight pit match under Vince. 
But uh, Seth Rollins takes on Matt Riddle in a fight pit. Special guest referee, Daniel Cormier, UFC legend, Hall of Famer, or whatever he is. I don't know if he's in their Hall of Fame. Future uh, UFC Hall of Famer. Daniel Cormier, great, great fighter. Great mixed martial artist. But the guy was never a part of WWE before. I would have rather saw Ken Shamrock as a guest ref. I don't know what the fuck Vince had against Ken Shamrock. I don't know if Triple H doesn't like him or what. But it, if Ken Shamrock does not get put in the Hall of Fame within one or two, three years, they fucking hate him. He's being blackballed or something because why the fuck was he not put in the WWE Hall of Fame already? He was IC champ, inter tag champ, and IC champ. The first MMA guy to jump to pro wrestling was Ken Shamrock. He made history. And my God, he was great in the ring. He had great matches with just about everybody. He wrestled. I'm just saying, if uh, Ken Shamrock does not get put in the WWE Hall of Fame, there's something going on and he's being blackballed and it's not right. Because you got guys that have done less than Ken Shamrock that are put in the WWE Hall of Fame. Guys like Coco Beware, he never held a title. Honky Tonk Man, yeah, he was the longest reigning Intercontinental Champ. I guess he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. He did, but... His gimmick was really fucking, uh, really cheesy. He was great at playing Elvis, rip off, but his gimmick was lame and he was not a good worker. Ken Shamrock was way better than Coco Beware and Honky Tonk Man, in my opinion, and he's not in the Hall of Fame. Also, King Kong Bundy's not in there. Sadly, he passed away, but he should be in there. Bam Bam Bigelow should be in there. Demolition need to be in there. Sid, he should be in there. So, uh, yeah. About the fight pit, I got, no, I got no problem. I got no issue with Daniel Cormier being the ref. Good for him. I know he's a big WWE fan. But I'd rather see Ken Shamrock. My prediction. Uh, I don't see Seth winning. This is like. An MMA fight and wrestling match. At the same time in a fight pit. I don't know if, how they're going to take all the ropes down. From the main ring. I think they might have a second ring. Set up by the entrance. Like uh, the lion's den. They put by the entrance at SummerSlam 99. I think they might have another ring for the fight pit by the entrance. I'm not sure. Unless they can take the ropes down within like five minutes. The ring crew. But uh, I think Matt Riddle wins for sure. But I love Rollins. He has been an MVP in 2022 for WWE. He's been one of the MVPs. For fucking sure. I mean I can name a lot of guys. That have been just MVPs. And women. Bianca. In 2022. Liv Morgan. Drew McIntyre. Kevin Owens. Um, Sheamus. Imperium. The Brawling Brutes. They've been MVPs. Of a. Uh, 2022, Seth Rollins been an MVP, Cody Rhodes been an MVP, even though he only wrestled three times, I think three or twice, but uh, Matt Riddle wins a fight pit for sure, I don't see him losing a fight pit match, extreme rules for the women's title, what the hell will main event? I don't know, but this is the last match I'm predicting out of six matches. They might have a match on the kickoff, but who cares about the kickoff? Um, 
So I don't know what the main event will be. It might be Liv Ronda because Ronda is a big name. I think the main event will either be Edge, Finn, or Liv uh, Ronda. But here we go, Liv Morgan, Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. Liv defends in an Extreme Rules match. I have loved how they have booked Liv going into this match. She did that table dive off the top rope. That was damn impressive. Looked uh, fucking scary to jump that high up. That high up on through a table, I wouldn't want to do that. I'd probably be afraid because I'm afraid of heights. But Liv is awesome. Love her. Her title reign, I don't care about everybody bitching about her title reign's been bad. And you don't like how she defeated Ronda because Ronda did not get pinned clean or tap. Well, I don't care. I love Liv Morgan. She's been a great champ. And uh, I'm Team Liv Morgan on Saturday. I know Ronda's on the poster of Extreme Rules. Here it is. So, yeah, Ronda's on the poster, but who cares? And I definitely could see Ronda getting it back. I guess our Fox and the Fox executives love Ronda Rousey on SmackDown, so they might want her to be the champion again. I don't fucking know. But uh, if you were smart, and I know you are Triple H, if you were smart, I would put over Liv. I would. But again, I'm a Liv Mark. I'm a Liv fanboy. I won't be that... I won't be that pissed if Liv loses because I would expect it for her to not have that long of a reign. But I think she should really win. And again, you want to be unpredictable, Triple H, with this uh, new WWE under Triple H. You want to be unpredictable, put over Liv fucking Morgan, over Ronda. My prediction Liv Morgan wins and retains. She should. I hope. Again, if Ronda Liv... If Ronda Liv... If Ronda Rousey wins, I won't be shocked or upset. But I want Liv to win more, and I think it would help her more than Ronda winning. Ronda had the title for a while. Or since uh, WrestleMania... She had it, lost that money in the bank, so I don't know. She had a three-month title reign, or two-month, I don't know. But Ronda doesn't need the title again on her. It would be boring. Liv is someone new, different, that they gave the title to. You got to build up Liv for at least another year. You got to keep building her up. Is a top star and a draw for your company so you can have future women as top stars. And not just Bailey, Charlotte, Bianca. you got to have more women as top stars and Liv definitely should be one of them. They pushed her the last, I'd say, three months as a top woman. But they need to keep doing it for the future of the company. Keep pushing Liv for the good of the future of the women's division. So Liv Morgan wins is my prediction. I 100% feel in my heart Liv Morgan should win. Now will she? I don't know. But I'll be watching Saturday to find out. I'm Peacock, The Cock, Extreme Rules Saturday. Follow me on Twitter. I'll be tweeting it at WWE NXT Guy. Hope you enjoy my Extreme Rules. 2022 predictions. Bye for now.